So the two main things that I would encourage folks to check out, I have a, um, a, an infographic on my website that, that has tips to help with copywriting, but I also included a number of free resources that are my go-to ones, um, like my go-to websites to help me write, help me improve my writing. So um, there's things like, like a website to check how conversational is your, your copy. Like you want to shoot for that middle school range. Well, how do you know if you're in that zone? So there's a, um, a link on there that takes you to a, a free website where you can have your copy analyzed. Um, there's, you know, play, free plagiarism checkers. There's, um, you know, royalty free. There's sites to get royalty free photography for free um, to use in your copy. There's a whole, a whole slew like um, headline optimizers, email subject line optimizers. These are all free websites that I use all the time in writing my copy that help save me time and take the pressure off. Um, on there. So yeah, if you go to that link, you can enter in your information. Um, they'll, that, they'll put you on my email list and I'm, um, kind of revamping how I'm doing my, uh, my emails. I want to be able to provide a lot more free, um, tips and tricks and tools to, to get anyone who wants to know writing copy better. So that would be what I would recommend is to get, get on the list, get that download. Um, and then you can start using those free resources. That sounds amazing. It sounds just, just what you're describing. I'm trying to write my first ads and um, I'm struggling with the pictures. I'm struggling with, with a couple of different things. Like I, I like the challenge of it. I want it cause I want to see the game, like the game with the numbers in the background to see impressions yeah. and conversions and all that. Like there's my numbers mind. Right. right. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And, and how does what I say impact? that. Like I knew how to do that with flowers. I don't know how to do it completely in this world. So and it's I, tough because like the platforms change. So like if you're advertising on, on Facebook, you've got to like play within their rules and you can't say certain things and you know, you have to be careful in how you phrase things. But if you're, you know, you're advertising on, on Google, the rules are different. So it's, um, it's an interesting, like, it's interesting to learn and factor in all those rules, what you, what you can and can't include in your emails because it could get flagged as spam. Um, so they actually have websites that I don't, I haven't been able to find a good free one yet. Um, but so I may just have to pay for it at some point, but it runs your text through their tool and it flags any words that could be marked as spam, like could send your email, your entire email into the spam folder. So wow. there's, yeah, there's all these things to think about that you just can't click send and, and go. So I try to, I try to make those a little bit more understood, um, for my clients, but it's hard because it, it constantly changes. Yeah. I was warned early on because my first company is around gambling addiction awareness. Mm -hmm. And my social guy was worried that me having the words gambling in there might flag me because they might think I'm trying to promote gambling instead of yeah. not promote it. But then I get all pissed off at all those game commercials where they say they pay you. That's all gambling. Anyway. Um, if they can make it, my messaging needs to get on there. Uh, I, I'm with I'm at, one of my friends, um, just had her book published and she can't even advertise it on Facebook because of one word in her title that is banned. Like her, her book is banned on Facebook. So, <laughs> cause she, oh. Yeah. It's like, which is, which is ironic because her book is about part of her book is about reclaiming language. And, um, the irony is her book is banned because of, of part of her title. But Can you share that word with us or am I being too nosy? I don't know if, if your group, if your people can handle it. No, it has the word bitchy in the title oh. so because it has profan, I guess profanity flags it. And Yeah. Yeah, one of my friends has a book. Alcohol is S H pound sign T. And that so didn't, I, did they not let that one go? They, well, I've seen them advertise it. We talk about it all the time. I don't know that he paid for ads that way. Well, because I know like um, the, the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F, like that has the asterisk too. And I feel like I've seen those ads. Yeah. But this completely spells out the word as part of the title. There's no like asterisk on it. So she just needs a new cover with some, if it needs to change the rules. No. <laughs> well, there's that, but make the I an exclamation point or something. I don't know, but that's yeah. the point, right. A word around some kind of word. Yeah. The, the tip or the, I guess the reminder is to always, always know the rules you're having to 
whose playground you're in and what the rules are there. Yeah. I'm just starting to take the Facebook blueprint that I just didn't even know existed until about a week ago. Um, and I'm, I can only handle it in like 10 minute little intervals because yeah. it's not, it's complex. Yeah. And I probably still ain't getting it. I'll have to take it a few more times, but at least there's some awareness around this stuff. So you got, thank you for bringing that up. That was important. So I have my last question. If you're good. Okay. What is your favorite book? Oh dear. Like my favorite copywriting book or my favorite book book? No, like what would you tell the audience to read book? Like for, for cop, I mean, like, cause I have my copywriting favorite and then I have like a recent, a book that I read recently this year that popped into mind immediately, but it's like a murder mystery. My aunt, um, I, I don't know what book club she's in, but I want to be in her book club. Let me get the author of it. Um, it's such a good book. Like I, I, I even, I sent a copy to my grandmother and I sent a copy to my mom and my mom and I had the same exact reaction when we were reading that we got to the same part and both of us at our respective homes, like stood up and went, what? And like finished the book standing. Like it was, it's like just that gripping. Um, it's called the silent patient by Alex. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get the name, last name, right. Michael It's like M I C H A E L I D E S. Okay. Silent patient. If you like, um, if you like murder mysteries, it's great. Entertainment Weekly. I'm just reading on Amazon. An unforgivable Hollywood-bound new thriller, a mix of Hitchcockian suspense, Agatha Christie plotting, and Greek tragedy. It's really good. Okay. I, uh, I used to love, I like like Mary Higgins Clark and oh, yeah. that kind of mystery stuff. I'm noticing the older I get, living alone, I don't go too far into thrillery kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one, the, this silent patient is one. Um, I could read that one at night, like in my house by myself and feel, I mean, it, it can get kind of like, Ooh, it's more of a psychological thriller. Like it's not a, um, it's not like, like reading a book on Jack the Ripper or something. It's not like, like horror kind of stuff. Okay. Well, I will, uh, I think it's going to be fun as part of, um, as part of the content, as part of everybody getting to know everybody, the book thing. And I guess I kind of thought I'd hear some of the stereotypical answers and so far I haven't. So I like, Oh, good. Yeah. So this is fun because well, I have, I love to read and I go through, sometimes I go through dry spells and all, but this year has been like the resurgence of mystery novels. And so I've been just kind of drinking those lately. Love it. Love it. 